Hi, this is John, and today I'd like to discuss an idea of crafting your images versus just applying a technique and then walking away, about being thoughtful and mindful about what we're doing with our images and drawing our eye throughout the image, um, drawing your eye into the image, and using different things and tools that, uh, techniques and tools that allow us to do that. And I can think of no better set of tools to do that than with Nick's great products. And specifically today, we'll be crafting this particular image from Font Hill uh, with the help of Nick's Viveza 2 and Color Effects Pro 4. So let's get started. I'll drag in the, the panel from Nick here that you can choose to have a, available or not. I like to have it available. One of the first things I'll do, uh, as I do with many of my images, is bring in tonal contrast. I like tonal contrast a lot because it does just that. It gives the, a nice punch uh, and vibrance to the image very quickly and easily. I'm going to change the, the preset of uh, the mid-tone to, from 50 to 25. I think that's more reasonable. And uh, so now I have highlights at 25, midtones at 25, shadows at 25, and saturation at 20. Um, these are very subjective choices. Uh, the, the presets are not bad. I, I do like to make them all the same. And oft times I'll bring the saturation down uh, to zero because I, I'm, I've chosen uh, different techniques to use to get my colors to be a certain way. But in, for this image, I'm fine with that. And then something you may or may not know about is if we roll down this control points, if you, if you like the look but you want to feather it or adjust it a little bit, this opacity slider is going to work much like the opacity slider that we'll use in Photoshop when you have two layers. And so you can feather the look here uh, or maybe a better way to look at it is this is yet another tool that allows you globally to feather. Even though it's located under this control points, so it's kind of a funky place to put it. We roll that down, there it is, and we can do that. And in another move here, I'll show you why that's helpful uh, to do. And it's one of the key benefits of a ColorFX Pro 4 is the ability to stack multiple filters on top of each other and then be able to adjust the opacity of each one of those. For now though, we're gonna go ahead and accept that as it is because I'm gonna do a different step within Nix Viveza. Um, just to sidetrack here for a second, if I go down to the bottom here, we're in my layers palette, just to further dis the, or continue the discussion I just had on that opacity tool within Color Effects Pro, we can do the same thing right here now. I can take this opacity slider and that's going to take down to zero means none of that adjustment I did in color effects is showing. This is 70% of it, you know, this is 100%. So we can feather that here as well in a more traditional way within Photoshop. Okay, let's move on. So Viveza is what I'm going to choose next, specifically because I feel like the floor is a little too bright. I feel like this corner up in here uh, in the wall is a little too dark. Under the table is a tad bright. And then this picture that sits on the, the stand here would like to be adjusted. So a great tool to be crafting at this point is definitely Viveza. So we're going to go ahead and grab a control point. There's a couple ways to do this. Here's what I choose to do. I'm going to keep those the size of the circle at its default. It's better to have a number of smaller circles than to make the whole circle so big that it encompasses more of the image than you really need to. Go ahead and make a little adjustment to darken that floor down. But you'll notice that it's also affecting that table and darkening that. We'll address that in a minute. Let's go ahead now and hold our Alt or Option key, which is going to allow us to duplicate this adjustment. And I'm going to drag that. I'm going to continue to hold my Alt or Option key and move this to four or five places along the floor. Now what I can do is, if I feel like I don't have enough of adjustment, I can go ahead and draw a marquee over all of these points that I've put there. It'll now group them, and if I go up to here at the top of the panel, top right, I hit the group. Now I can go ahead and adjust all of those and make it a little darker. 
I can add a little bit of structure if I want to, saturation, whatever I want to do for that whole group of um, control points that I put there. So let's address this table at this point. I've made that too dark because that's a neighboring tonality that's so close to the ones on the floor, it doesn't know any better. So if we put in a, um, an anchor point here and do nothing to it other than place it there, you'll notice that the color uh, or the, the tonality came back to what it was. Basically, you're saying to Viveza, hey, I don't want to touch this particular tonality, which, believe it or not, is different in, in the numerical value than the floor points that we put in here. That's, thus, it's canceling it out. So let's just do a couple of quick moves so that we don't spend a whole lot of time. You notice that brought the brightness there back, but I want to be sure to get that a little darker. I'm going to go up into this corner, and the reason I want to brighten this up is because I know another move I'm going to make in, to in um, color effects is going to darken that corner back up again. Normally I wouldn't make it this bright because I want to leave it realistic. I want it to be somewhat dark because there's shadows over in there. It ought to be somewhat dark. But I know it's going to block up a little bit with another uh, move I'm going to make here. So I'm brightening that up a little more than I normally would. I'm going to come to this edge of the picture, which appears to be, it feels a little bit too bright to me. I'll make the control circle a little smaller. So it just affects that and just bring that down just a touch. So let's see what we've done here with the preview. Here's what we've done. We've taken and, and darkened the floor down a little bit under the table, up in that corner above the bed in the picture. And so now we're starting to be very mindful of some some of the ways that we want this image to look. I'll accept that. And now we're going to go back into Color Effects Pro 4. And you'll notice that, that my favorites are what's showing up here in the panel. And if I go right into Glamour Glow, but if I go over here, you want to make something your favorite, just click the star next to it and make it yellow. It'll show up in your favorites folder or tab. So now I want to go ahead and apply uh, glamour glow and I'll crank up the glow just a little bit it might be difficult to see so let me hit the compare so there it is with essentially tonal contrast and the viveza move and here it is with glamour glow I like what it does it retains the the tonal contrast move that we made but it brings back sort of the softness of it or some of the softness of it that gives it more of the feel that I was after for this image um, you'll, you'll notice up here, it did bring back some of the darkness, which I was concerned about, and that's the reason I brightened that up just a little bit. Now, again, if you like that look, but you just want to tone it down a little bit, which I do, I'm going to bring this down to about 70, yeah, let's go to about 80%. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add another filter at this point. I don't need to go back out to Photoshop. I can stay right here. I can add another filter, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and get dark and light and center. This is a great tool for helping to keep the viewer in the frame. You really want them to be in the frame and to be focused on the subject. And to me, the subject is definitely the bed in this particular image. So the way this works is we have a place center. We can, we can adjust the luminosity of that center. We can adjust the luminosity of the border around it, and we can change the size of, of that particular, um, of the center area, actually. And then we have two choices here. We can have a, a more elongated shape or more right in the middle of the image. I'm going to go with the elongated shape here. I'm going to grab the place center and put it right in the middle of the bed here. Very subtle. Let's do a compare. Before, after before, after. It's subtle, but it's really, really important to holding uh, the viewer's attention right in the middle of the frame. And again, it looks like it's brightened the, the bed up a little more than I want because the default setting is 25%. We've spent time crafting this in Viveza, so with you know, specific control points. So I'm gonna bring that luminosity down pretty much to zero because I don't want the middle to be made brighter. I just want the edges to be made a little darker, which we've done by, and I'll bring this back to more like 40%. So now let's look and compare. It's a little more subtle than it was before. I think I'm gonna change the placement of that center. 
a little bit. So I'll go click on that again. And I'll bring that up just to the top of the bed. Yep, I like that better. It brought the, the shape of that uh, dark and light and center up just a little bit to where I think it feels a little more natural. Now we can accept that and we're done. So let's kind of review. Here's how we started. If I get rid of all the layers, I did a tonal contrast move in uh, Silver Effects, I'm sorry, in Color Effects Pro. Uh, then I went into Viveza where I was mindful of the different areas of the image that needed some adjustments, the floor being darker under the table and those types of things. And then I was able to do two moves at one time within Color Effects Pro 4. Uh, to add a look, a feel that I wanted with Glamour Glow. And then also staying right in that product because of the ability to stack the different uh, filters on top of each other and even change the opacity, I did the dark and light and center. So again, uh, I hope you might be a little more mindful about crafting your images rather than just applying um, techniques uh, globally. Be mindful about the quality of the light and directing the viewer through your images. And there's no better way to do that than with Nick's great products.